What's happening, my beautiful people? My name is Dirty Mike, and today, my friends, we are going to be defending corner kicks. Everybody's been asking for this tutorial, and I've got it lined up. If you enjoy the content, make sure to drop a thumbs up. Also, in the comments down below, which tutorial do you need to see? I'm talking about ASAP, ASAP, coming at you live and in demand. Uh, but without further ado, let's get this underway. Let's get started with a couple examples. And we're going to focus in this tutorial stopping the short corner as well as that near post corner kick that we see on repeat. I'm talking every day of the week. And I just wanted to give you guys a couple examples prior to getting into how to stop this type of corner kick. I've made a full tutorial if you want to know how to score this type of corner kick. And I'll leave that down below in the description in the comments. It'll be there. Just scroll down below. And that's where the majority of goals are going to be conceded in that little area right there. Very commonly people use the quick tactic, they overload the near post and they put it in there and they hope someone such as an Ibrahimovic, a Fellaini gets on the end and nods it home and goalkeepers fall down before the ball even ever gets there. It's just not a good look and I do have a quick disclaimer. There's no way to stop every single corner kick or some of the corner kick bullshit that happens in FIFA 17. But what you can do is make sure you're not conceding the same goal over and over again. Make your opponent think outside of the box. Make him do something different. And that's often the difference between guys that are good defenders, average defenders, amazing defenders, and so forth and so on. You're playing the percentages. And the second freeze frame, same zone. And this is the area that people are going to lob it in. And what can you do to defend it? And I just wanted to make sure that I showcased a couple of the types of goals that we see often before we got into some of the freeze frames in terms of defending near post. And it's too bad. This is more of a goalkeeper error. Uh, then it is a great header or a great setup of a play. The goalkeeper just falls down before anything's happened. And now we're talking about activity and we're defending now. And this is where you're looking at those exact same scenarios where the guy's lobbing into the near post. What you got to do is use a couple of your taller players ideally and scoot them quickly. And you might have seen it. If not, rewind. But I'm moving both of these guys and I want to be actively moving. I'm not waiting for the ball to get lobbed in. I want to control a couple of the guys on the near post because I do not want to give up that near post goal. I want to see you put it in the middle, put it on the back post, do something different. And I've noticed as players start to put it in that middle of the, the box area or even the back post, those headers those don't seem to go in quite as commonly. Uh, they often put them over the goal. Their placement's not perfect. It's not as automatic. So you're going to actively move at least two or three players as quick as you can and use the right analog stick to do this. Whether you're on the PlayStation, you're on the Xbox, it's going to be your friend. And the same goes for the short cover where this is another bug, a glitch, a mistake in the game. It's just bad gameplay mechanics. If you've seen the goal, then you understand. I can make a full tutorial on it. People go short and then they whip in across to the back post and your goalkeeper gets stuck on the front post. He doesn't react. And what you saw there on that first freeze frame, I saw which way he turned and therefore I cheated it as far as possible and he overclocked it and went out of play. Second example, understanding the bug. I just want to disrupt what I know is going to score. That's all I want to do. Please let me disrupt how you typically score your goals. It's not amazing defense. I leave a lot of space. I missed the tackle, but he didn't get to lob the pass in right away and it causes issues. The goalkeeper is able to get on the end of it and we don't concede. And this is truly the difference between having 30 games in FET Champions or having 25 or having 20 and so forth and so on because corners win and lose matches for you. It just is what it is. You don't have to like it. I don't love it. I don't love it. It's, it's, not, it's not a fan favorite of mine. And now the last example is when your opponent takes control of a, a player on his own and you've got to follow in front. And you don't see this as common but it happens and it's effective where your opponent is only controlling that one guy and he's going to try to hit them on a corner kick and typically what they do is they use the near post and they really try to abuse that near post where they back into you. I've talked about it before, but you've got to follow in front of that man. When you notice he's moving independently, do something about it. Do not just sit there and wait. And the more you play, the more you practice, the more scenarios you kind of understand instinctively and then you can start making changes. But as always, if you enjoyed the content, make sure to drop a thumbs up, subscribe if you're brand new, and I have a lot more coming your way ASAP, ASAP.